Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of Home Kid Insider. You've got me, as always, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal and the world's largest collector of misshapen Jolly Ranchers. It's Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. You know, I don't know if you ever heard of this prank, but uh, back in the day, I never did this, so, you know, don't come after me. <laughs> but what you could do, like, in college dorms or whatever, if there was a shower head that, like, unscrewed the head part and then you could screw it back in you put jolly ranchers in the shower head and you screw that back in and the next person who takes a shower is wondering why they're so sticky don't do it i'm not saying to do it i'm just saying it has been done not by me you know what i'm saying that's just a good practical joke anyway i, I just scratch all i'm gonna cut all that cut all that <laughs> ah, see made me cough okay anyway and that's on a practical joke corner andrew we have a ton of news more reviews to get to I have a, a stupid amount of stuff. A stupid amount of stuff. So let's let's get into it. First of all, WWDC. It was announced last week as you listen and watch this episode. It is happening June fifth. That will be the day of the keynote. Not much details, although we do have a invite design, which is the uh, this like kind of uh, rainbow psychedelic, you know, colors at WWDC. So you know we could read into this, try to read the tea leaves. Some people thought, oh, that's definitely like a VR goggle lens. Uh, that's what that represents. I thought maybe they're bringing the trash can style Mac Pro back. Maybe it's just going to be a circle again. Who knows? But uh, yeah, what are you excited? WWDC. It looks like that arch that they put Ooh. in the the center of their new uh, headquarters to me, the one like Tim Cook that walks out of. Yeah, yeah to me true. that's what it looked. I but I don't know. Yeah, there's all sorts of different ones. I know I don't even know where he got it. Whether he did it himself or or pulled it from somewhere. But I know Wes shared that one uh, image in our Slack, a, a random channel or something, Stephen. Uh, that was like a, a larger version that had a full circle, and it looked just like Apple Park, but oh, in sure, all the bright, true. vivid colors. Um, it's probably all it is. Either way, yeah, we're going to get all of our all the you know OSs. So uh, we don't really know too much in terms of like smart home news for this year, Stephen. The only mm-hmm. thing I've heard, kind of smart home related, is that they were testing a new split screen view. For Apple TV, where you could watch like uh-huh. four oh. video streams at once, I do obviously like for sports, um, sports, which would be pretty neat. But I, I like that idea. I think that's a really neat idea. I mean, why mm-hmm. not have a split? And they said like a four. Like you could put four on at once, mm-hmm. not even like half and half, but be able to quickly move between the two without relying on the hosted na- hosting app to implement it themselves. I think it's okay. a cool idea. That is cool. That's cool. And you can do picture in picture like with your HomeKit cameras on the Apple TV. So, you know, bringing that into some of the other apps, forcing it. You know, when it comes to smart home, I feel like they've talked about Matter the last two years. And that's kind of just been like all they talked about. Matter's out now, so it's a thing. I don't imagine they're going to talk a ton about that. I mean, I would love to see high resolution HomeKit secure video. So HSV could be 2K and 4K. Would love to see more like automation type triggers in the Home app. You know, we've talked about the Apple TV. It'd be great if waking an Apple TV can trigger a smart home scene and vice versa. You know, I do have some shortcuts that wake Apple TVs, but I feel like they could do more with the Apple TV integration there. But, yeah, I'm excited to see if they do anything. Any updates would be great to to home. I think uh, there's one thing that I've been torn about. We haven't heard anything one way or the other, so, like, I'm not, like, reading off a rumor. But um, the home OS type thing, like the HomePod with the display, if um, (laughs) – If That's Apple true. were to do something like this, if the plan was to open this up to developers, which that's kind of their thing, uh, would they announce at least the, the OS or the idea of this at DubDub and then release a product like in the fall or something? Right. Or, uh, or are they just going to you know announce the product at an event sometime and then give developers uh, two weeks to create apps for it? Like that mm-hmm. kind of situation that they've kind of done in the past. I don't know. But that would be a nice surprise to see. It would be. Well, stay tuned. June 5th, WWDC is happening, and uh, we'll be covering it, of course. Do you think we're going to see the VR headset real quick? I mean, what's your over-under on this? It seems more and more likely, and this one's going to be entirely reliant on third-party devs. But it's mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. Frust- it's kind of frustrating, and I can definitely see like on Apple's side. But the amount of like naysayers there are before a product even ships... <laughs> And we're getting so all many the that even internally at Apple, they're <laughs> conflicted on whether right. or not this thing has a purpose. So, like, I, I, 
I want to. Say, I want them to actually release something announcing, so we know what they've been doing or what it's been like, kind of evolving into. Because right now it's just been rumors, and we have no idea the way that they're actually going. Um, right. you know, maybe this would be like the Apple Watch, where they'll release it, and then after a year or two, they kind of refine it and focus in on what really works and what doesn't. Um, yeah. But I mean, they've I've... got a ton of games in Apple Arcade. They got controller yeah. situations. I think Fitness there's a lot plus. to do here. Fitness Plus. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm like 50 50 now. I feel like I've never seen so much pre release naysaying for an Apple product. Yeah. I mean, there's always naysaying. Like before the iPad came out, there's naysaying, Apple Watch. Like there's always naysaying. But I feel like this is like, I don't know. You would think the product was announced. So anyway, uh, let's, let's keep going. We got a ton of stuff to here to cover. Eve. Eve is shipping Matter enabled smart home products and updating some of their products to Matter already. If you have an Eve Energy Smart Plug, Matter Support is now available. If you buy it, it'll have the Matter Support, and you'll also be able to update. If you have a recent Eve Energy, you can update it in the Eve app for that Matter Support. That's cool. I use a bunch of Eve stuff, but it's all kind of like HomeKit directly. But if you want some Eve stuff and you're out of the HomeKit world, you can use the Matter. It matters. There you go. What I like, Stephen, I don't know if you caught this, but it said in the PR we got that you can actually update the Eve Energy. Um, so they have a you could already update the Eve Energy via just firmware updates, right? That was sure, already a thing sure. to upgrade to Matter. It was the Eve Energy, what, Door and Window? And door and motion. Window, yep. I think like those yes, three. the Motion, yes. <clears throat> so, so that was already a thing. But now they have a new Matter firmware that's supposed to be better. Um, but instead of updating through the Eve app, you can actually update through the Home app, they said. That is what I thought was exciting and nice. That I is... want more things to update through Home app natively and not rely on third-party apps for the updates even as good as the eve app is i want yeah. to see more just native default in the apple app that would be exciting i do like that my leviton switches have been showing that there is an update available in the home app like looking mm -hmm. at the devices in the home app it'll tell me that but it won't let me update them like you could see let me turn on the brightness so you guys can see on the camera like for the dining light and pantry light, you see there's like a little box with a download uh, right under the name. And that shows it saying that an update is available. Some Leviton switches are disconnecting, you know, thanks HomeKit Architecture. But anyway, um, so it's showing it, but I have to go to the Leviton app to update it. And I haven't yet because the connectivity is a little weird. But anyway, I don't want to get into it. Uh, I do want to mention real quick with Eve stuff. I did recently get a, a new Eve weather to put on my patio. And I was able to set up a pretty cool automation uh, just, you know, for our automation people out there. Mm -hmm. I have some patio fans on a smart switch. They're actually on a Leviton smart switch. But I like, I want the fans to be on during the day if it's hot, you know, like that's the automation I would want to do. I didn't, I don't think I could do that in the home app. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I went straight to the Eve app because I was like, let me do the Eve weather. I, I know whatever controls are available for the Eve weather, it'll be in the Eve app. And so I created an automation in the Eve app, which basically says Monday through fi Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. If the temperature is above 77 degrees or whatever I did, turn on the patio fans and then turn off at 6 p.m. And it works. And it's been hot uh, again. We're already in summer here in Florida. I know some places it's still snowing. <laughs> But here in Florida, it's now summertime. And uh, the automation, now whenever it's really hot outside, I can walk out and the fans are already on during the day. So if I want to work out there, I can do that. And if it's not that hot, it the fans didn't turn on. And so I thought that was a pretty cool automation uh, to automate fans and stuff. So anyway, you could do I did yes. that in the EVAT. So very cool. Okay. Uh, Amazon Sidewalk is apparently the network is now available or... This is, a, again, long-range, low-bandwidth network. Give any Internet of Things device free, low-speed data. And you'll see this map here if you're watching us on YouTube. All the blue is where Amazon Sidewalk is available. Just more, you know, signals to pulse through our, our flesh. But anyway, talk to me about Amazon Sidewalk, because I know we talked about it a while ago, and I've honestly forgot, like, all of what that actually is. So <laughs> tell me about it. So basically, this is built into a bunch of ring products, like all their doorbells and everything like that. And your doorbell was contributing to Sidewalk, where right. it would it would provide this data uh, or this data connection for uh, devices that were nearby. And it was Amazon devices, and it would do things like 
if your doorbell is like signed in the sidewalk or your neighbor's doorbell is signed in the sidewalk, your like smart lock was able to connect to that network and still be accessible even though it's Bluetooth, but you could control it remotely through like sidewalk. Um, mm-hmm. If you're home kid, it's a different thing. But what they've done here is they're now allowing like anyone to build IoT devices to use this free, low-speed data network. And they've put so many doorbells and ring devices through, you know, everywhere <laughs> that they're able to say they cover like 90% of the population with Sheesh. this. So the the easy ideas are going to be things like a dog collar with sidewalk mm, built in. So gotcha. if you air tag, you have to be within near an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac to get that right. signal ping. And Correct. then it's just a pinpoint on the map that dog is like already gone. With sidewalk, your dog can run around and it's still going to be connecting to sidewalk and sending that location like in real time, basically, um, as it's moving. And you can see where exactly it's going and like a pat, like all this stuff, this data that you'd be able to see with that. So that's one thing they're talking about. They're talking about um, doing stuff for uh, like pill bottles and all sorts of things that are really low data so no video really right. but any iot devices that just take a very little amount of data and they can even be outside and connecting like they talked about on the verge like he got a sample like testing device where you could like test the signal and he just mm. drove around everywhere even into like um like a park path and stuff and was still connected somehow to sidewalk That's so wild. it just it's very you know, there's a lot okay. of coverage. So it, it's interesting. Um, sure. There's a lot of questions about sidewalk, but it's interesting to see how this will take shape. That is interesting. So there's a lot of Amazon stuff out there. That's all I'll say. A lot of Amazon stuff. Okay. <laughs> Link in the show notes if you want to read more about that. Uh, also, before we get to uh, thanking one of our one of our friends here, Home Plus has an update this is Home Plus. They're on 6 now, Home Plus 6, and it says there's bulk edit actions for old devices. Is this something that you have tried, Andrew, in this new Home Plus app? I have not tried this yet, but what excites me here is that you'd be able to, if you had, like, a device that you replaced and it was uh-huh. in, like, 10 different scenes, you'd be able to swap it out for, like, a new one. Like, Ooh. you go in there, remove that, add that yes. in to a bunch of different stuff. I like that. I think that's really cool. Yes. That's that's one of the bigger updates here, or bigger changes in that new update, and I like that a lot. That is very cool. That would be helpful because, especially for all my switches that regularly disconnect, it would be wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, very cool. So that's Home Plus. We'll put a link to that app in the show notes. It's a great app too, just to, just for managing your your HomeKit stuff. We're going to talk more about the Sonos Era speakers because I got a bunch of them in hand as well. And so let's talk about that. But first. Let's thank our friends at ExpressVPN. Listen, when you browse the Internet, wherever you are, especially if you're in like a hotel or an airport or a cafe, you want to make sure that you can trust that interconnection and that your data is safe. That's why you need to be using ExpressVPN. And I will say, I've mentioned it before when we've had ExpressVPN sponsor the show, but, you know, if you were trying to maybe watch a uh, sports ball game, and, you know, there's sometimes a blackouts in certain areas due to location. No, I'm not saying anything specific i'm just saying you know vpn could help with that and i've used express vpn with many friends and it has helped them so anyway every time you connect to an unencrypted network again like hotels airports basically any network that's not your own your online data is not secured hackers on the same network can gain access steal your personal data that's going over the internet financial details you name it well express vpn creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that hackers can't steal your data Hackers can make some serious cash selling personal information. We had all that news about, like, passcode and iPhone stuff before. But ExpressVPN makes it easier than ever to keep your information safe. You just fire up the app, click one button, and you're instantly protected. And right where that one button is, that's where you can choose, like, where your device is going to act like it's from, whether it's another country or another state. And ExpressVPN works on all your devices, like laptops, phones, tablets, so you can stay secure on the go. So secure your online data today at ExpressVPN dot com slash hki and get three extra months for free that's expressvpn dot com slash hki e x p r e s s vpn dot com slash hki that link is also in the show notes our thanks to expressvpn for sponsoring this episode now 
<clears throat> I have Sonos's with me, Andrew. Look at this. I got this guy. There's that guy. Wow. I got the big guy. And then I got these other guys. I got, hold on. I got these guys. <laughs> I got these guys too. And uh, I got them all. I got a, I got a pair of each. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be returning them all this weekend. But anyway, I got a pair of each. <laughs> and and uh, I, I have some thoughts. I know you did the full review. We're going to link that in the show notes. You have the video review, the article review, both the 300 and the 100. How, did you have any follow up, or do you want me to do you want me to share some of my thoughts? What do you want to do? How do you want to do this? I'll give you my thoughts again, and then yes. you share your thoughts. So okay. first, I was shocked, shocked, Stephen, by shocked. how many people are apparently personally offended by the look of the three hundred. Um, it's like you had like killed their dog or something because they were so mad. John, I'm not putting that in my home, like. So really? much of that, and I don't, un- I don't understand it personally. Um, <laughs> I think it looks neat. Like it looks very modern. It looks di- like it's I like different. Look at yeah. it. it looks weird, but not in a bad way. Like I don't think it's particularly ugly. It's still a very simple, yeah. cleanly designed speaker. But yeah. design is going to be everyone's going to have their preferences on design. Um, the second thing was, so I still really, really like the sound of this thing. I still don't have two of them yet to listen to the Dolby Atmos effect on the sound bar. So I guess mm. that is one thing that I, I would want to talk about. And maybe you have yeah. something that you'll be able to share about that. Yes. Um, yes. I still think like when listening to it, there isn't a ton of that upper channel. That's like my main thing. I think the bass is good. Sound quality is fantastic. It's better than the ones, better than the HomePod, um, better than the 100, obviously. But I just don't have enough of that upward firing channel. And I don't know if that's just because of the audio, like just through music. Um, it does feel very like room filling, but I'm not getting a dedicated overhead channel all that much, like where you can hear like, like a triangle coming above you or something like it, ju- it just feels encompassing, but not as much above. And I would guess that in an actual Dolby mixed track for your TV, that would change a little bit, but that, that's my main thing. I, I really, really like it. The controls are nice. I like there's a dedicated kill button for the mute switch. Cause I'm not using Amazon assistant or the Sonos assistant really. Yeah. Um, but I like them. I think the 100's a little bit boring just because there's there's not a huge difference from the 1 to the 100. It sounds a bit better, and I like the design more. But, yeah. like, I wouldn't tell someone to go, like, upgrade to it, like, if you have yeah. a Sonos 1 lying around. But, um, yeah. yeah, so give me your – oh, well, one question that we had um, pop up was Paul Coulson uh, asked on Twitter, if there's any way to identify spatial audio uh, stuff when you're listening to it on the uh, the 300, and, yes, you can actually see a Dolby app. Atmos logo in the app when yeah. it's playing. Otherwise, right. you can choose a. If you're listening to like Apple Music, there's a whole dedicated like playlist to spatial audio music, and there is a similar one on Amazon Music Unlimited that you can find. Just add to your library and then find it in the app. But otherwise, there's not like an easy. You can't filter them ahead of time. You can't put in like mm-hmm. metadata of spatial audio as a field and get everything that comes up. So, but they do tell you at least when you're listening to it. Yeah, and I would use the Sonos app as I was testing all of them, and you see that Dolby Atmos right in that now playing uh, page in the Sonos app. I totally agree with you on the 100s. You know, obviously HomePod sounds better than the 100s. I have a pair of Sonos 1SLs. I tested a pair of Era 100s. You know, slightly better sound, not enough to really warrant an upgrade. And so as rear speakers, I think the Era 100s would, would be a great addition uh, on more of like a budget level, if you want, you know, if you have a beam and a sub mini, or you have a, a Ray Sonos Ray, and you want to add some rears, I think the Aero 100s will work well as those kinds of rear speakers, uh, and not be as expensive. They are two hundred and fifty dollars, though. You know, they're not like cheap, and you can get a one SL right now still for two hundred. So, anyway, I totally agree with the Aero 100s. The Aero 300 is such an interesting beast, and like design wise. Like, it's fine. Like, it, it is big. I think that's the only caveat is when you look at your current space, I was trying to set up two Aero 100s on my desk here in the studio, and it was like the desk is gone. Like, there's no more desk. <laughs> I mean, they're big. They're very large, and they're very heavy. And so you do have to think about that, like, where you're going to place these. If you had HomePods or other speakers on a bookshelf, and it is not a very large bookshelf 
or you had books like behind the speaker, like this thing is big. Like you're going to have to have some space for it. So design wise, I think it looks good. It's a clean look, you know, and it's shaped this way because it does spatial audio individually or in the pair. And Sonos has done a bunch of videos talking about it's got a tweeter that fires upward. It's got tweeters that fire to the side. Mid-range tweeter fires forward. Two uh, force-canceling woofers in the middle. So, you know, that's why it's designed that way. It's, it's really focused on that spatial audio. <clears throat> like you said, very immersive, very loud. When I was testing them, yes. you know, I had the volume slider <laughs> like about halfway, and it was like loud. And I went to go test the home pods and I was like, are they playing? Oh, and let me raise the volume. I had to really crank it up. And so if you're looking for like clean volume to fill a large room, the Air 300's got it. They have the volume. Like it is serious. And I had a pair. I put a pair in this little studio, which this studio is eight foot by nine foot. Like it's not a large room. I actually found they were a little too much for this room. And I actually feel like their sound was like too compressed in this size room so i actually moved them to a larger room and they sounded better in a larger space actually uh, and i think it's because they're really meant even in sonos's documentation they say have them at least eight feet apart if you have two sonos's and i had them like two feet apart here in the studio and so, so i would not actually for the desk not not for the desk and especially here like i could not use them in this room one i don't think they sound as good in this space and you, you need the space. Like, you need a big room, I think, for them to really show their, their true potential. So when I moved it to a larger room, listen, they sound really good. I will say in a home theater setup, I set two of them up as rear speakers with my ARC and Subgen 3. Andrew, I mean, they are the most incredible rear speakers you will ever hear. Because I think that's the use case right there. I mean, the Era 300... Just one alone does spatial audio. And so you think about two, and those two just as the rears in a home theater setup, like, it was ridiculous. I watched scenes from Infinity War, which is like my stock testing scenes for Dolby Atmos, and it was, like, ridiculous. So, I mean, if you just want the most ridiculous rear speaker, amazing home theater setup, two Era 300s as rears, which, again, that's $900, with a Sonos Arc and a Subgen 3, incredible experience. Also close to three thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So like you do. Yeah, have to, yeah like, you're looking at twenty five hundred dollars, but someone who's like maxing out their home theater is going to be spending oh, yeah. that much anyway. And you're sure. going to set up with sure. wires and all this other nonsense. Like honestly, it's not terrible. And my favorite part about the Soto setup is you can do it piecemeal. Like if yeah. you were going otherwise and doing a like standard, okay, I'm going to spend the thousand dollars on my Denon receiver, but I really should wait to spend another, you know however much money on my center channel and my two front channels. And then it's like, I'm not going to put in rears yet. Cause I, I got to save up again before putting in rears. Like yeah. you, you, it's harder to do that because you can't just like yeah. just buy, you know, your thousand dollar receiver before and getting into everything else. <laughs> yeah. So like this, yeah. like, if you want to start out, you can just start with a sound bar and get spatial audio Dolby Atmos out of the box. And the arc sounds great. Yeah. Then add that sub or yeah. add the rears next, like whatever your preference is. Honestly, at this point, I'd probably jump straight to those rears versus the sub because there's some go base in those 300s. There is, okay, so this is what I wanted to ask you. Yes, there is good bass. I felt like out of the box, and again, I was here in my studio, the Era 300s compared to the HomePod 2s, there was bass, but I feel like the HomePod 2s were a little punchier. Like it had a little more like, punch in it not that that it was louder bass or whatever it just felt a little punchier and i don't know with the home pod you know that woofer it's firing i believe straight down and it's you know mm -hmm. sitting on a surface whereas the era 300s woofers are side firing and so they fire you know into each other as force cancellation i could not find the inches size for the era 300 woofer nowhere in sonos's documentation does it say it's a three inch or a two inch the home pod 2 is a four inch and so it also might be that it's just a smaller cone in the Aero 300s. Now, in the Sonos app, if I cranked the EQ on the bass for the Aero 300s, for sure, you start feeling it, and that bass is very present. But I did have to, like, crank it up to, like, plus 3, plus 4. But for the size of the HomePod 2 compared to the 300, I was actually surprised at how good I appreciated the bass from the HomePod 2 
right next to the Aero 300. Like the HomePod 2 actually performs really well, almost preferring the bass from those on some of those like pop song style, like just thump, thump, thump bass. So th- that was a strange. And again, Home Aero 300s have great bass, really present. You can crank it and really feel it. But uh, I was impressed with the HomePod 2's bass compared. I don't know how, how you felt about that. But. I think HomePod sounds it sounds really good. But to me, the difference was like the the Sonos bass was almost like more precise. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, like yeah, the yeah. home pods was a little bit like looser. Like there was mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe it was like punchier, but it didn't feel as as precise as the bass on the Sonos. Sure. If that makes sense. And and I did yeah. think when yeah, especially when changing it, um it over it was for sure better on the Sonos than on the home pod. And for me, I like like I did not like using the home pods as much like the big home pods for a theater setup. I thought like mm-hmm. I had problems sometimes like with the, the bass was so much or so kind of loose that it made like the dialogue get lost sometimes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. with Sonos, I, I never thought that was a thing. They even have a dedicated like dialogue boost mode that'll help further. But I think the precision of the bass makes it more ideal for, for videos versus the home pod, which is probably which is good for music and gives you that punchy feel, but if you're sure, using it for sure. video, I think the Sonus was definitely better. Well, and the weird thing is with the air, like you can buy a pair of Air 300s, but there's not an easy or consistent way to use just those two in a home theater setup. You know, there's no HDMI in. You can AirPlay mm-hmm. from an Apple TV, but I did find like Dolby Atmos was inconsistent. If I just used the control center on the Apple TV and selected my pair of Sonos Air 300s. It would not say that it's playing Dolby Atmos all the time. If I went to the settings app on Apple TV, audio, set temporary output, which is an option in the Apple TV settings. If I chose the Sonos Air 300s there and I jump back to watching Infinity War or whatever, it would say Dolby Atmos. But I, I'm not sure if like that's the intended like action for that. So okay, I'm not really sure how that's, you know, HomePod 2 is really like the de facto home theater setup with an Apple TV, unless you're using like an Arc beam or ray with sonos and then you you know you set up the other speakers in in that kind of in the sonos app but that was just a weird behavioral thing and i wasn't sure like if it's really intended for that if you just have the eras but anyway that's uh it's they're good speakers you know i, w- I would encourage people to go listen to them like if you, if you could find a best buy where you can listen to them in person and see how they compare maybe with your own home pod twos or or in the store i would suggest doing that but anyway re- full review andrew reviews in the show notes you should check that out as well era 300 okay real quick 16.4 was released last week officially you can go update if you had not updated your home kit architecture that update is now available as well plus you get like new emoji and stuff and so and there's like uh, a bunch of new shortcuts oh one of the new shortcuts things that i love in 16.4 is the ability to add intercom commands in shortcuts and so i've actually now created a shortcut that has a menu pop up and it'll ask me, what do you want to intercom? And for my kids, I have like one option that says dinner is ready. And it broadcasts to all the home pods in a Siri voice. Dinner is ready. Or if there's like, if it's evening and it's time for the kids to brush their teeth, I can have it just play to the home pods in their rooms and their bathroom. It says brush your teeth 20 times in a row. And I can, I don't have to speak it. I don't have to like say intercom. I could just hit this shortcut, hit the menu command, and all my home pods say what I wanted to say uh, every time. So I think it's a it's a cool release, and uh, I'm glad for some of those features. Have you noticed anything? You I mean, you've been the, one of the babies. Yeah. Go ahead. You should put that uh, shortcut link in the in the show notes because oh, you can okay. share short shortcuts. You can. You'll have cool to like idea. choose your home pods, you know, for the uh, in the steps or whatever. But I will. Uh, yes, I will do that. I will put that in there. Okay, uh, so that's the report. Now, are you playing with sixteen point five already? You on that beta train? Always I'm on beta always train. on the beta train. Steven. Always on the beta train. I <laughs> never get off. I get off of it for one day and then it's back on. Uh, right. Literally, how it came out. You know, four, sixteen four was released on a Monday. Sixteen five beta one was released on a Tuesday. Um, the biggest thing here for users uh, in the HomeKit space is um, there's now a shared admin can add matter add and edit matter devices on a home so before only the primary home user could add or edit matter devices now shared admins um co-owners whatever can do that so that's nice home change 
Siri can now uh, capture screen recordings, which is kind of cool. You don't have to even wait for the countdown or anything. You just tell Siri to, to screen record, and it just starts. That's pretty sweet. So that's a new feature. And the news app has a new uh, My Sports tab or Sports tab, which is right. nice. But those two aren't necessarily HomeKit related. <laughs> no, no, just sports, sports home, sports home related. Very cool. Well, uh, as 16.5 continues, uh, the beta is we'll, we'll cover it, of course. Uh, also, this is a surprise to no one, at least not to me. Philips Hue announced that their bulbs won't get matter support when promised. I feel like playing the down, down, down. Another one bites the dust. Uh, dun, dun. Sorry. Uh, you know, Belkin announced they're not even like doing matter. Belkin's like, nah, peace out. We're good. We don't even need that. Now Philips Hue is like, yeah, matter. Which. I mean, you need a Hue hub to use their stuff anyways, and their hub integrates with all the different smart home assistants. So, you know, I don't even know if Matter would have mattered as much to Philips Hue devices. But anyway, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I mean, with with Hue, I've got two trains of thought. The first is the fact that that Hue was already one of the most prevalent smart home devices out there. They worked with everything. You could mm. natively control Hue with so many things. They natively integrated into the brilliant panels on your wall. Like they are, they just had that open API that like everybody would use. And they worked with with Amazon, Google Home, Smart Things, HomeKit, just everything for so long. So mm. on one hand, they already support every freaking thing out there. Um, the second thing is, though, they said when, when they do ship matter, it is going to improve a few things. And one of them being, it'll be able to control all the bulbs at, like, one time. So instead of, like, da, 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 like sending the yeah. command through the bulbs in one, 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 kind of turning on, not in sync, with this update with matter, they will all turn on simultaneously and off simultaneously, mm. which I think is a really nice thing. Uh, That's it'll nice. just feel more natural, less weird as, like, one, 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 skipped one, and then that comes on another second later. Like, little things like that that are kind of slightly weird, um, it'll sure. fix it. So I, I think that'll be nice. Um, but, yeah, like okay. you said, okay. not super surprising. People need – they need ways to differentiate themselves and what's going to set them apart in a matter world. Uh, mm. I think he will for sure support matter one way or the other because they support everything. But True. they say they're waiting on others to kind of <laughs> set the stage. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So that's Hugh. All right, final piece of news bit, Home Widget. Uh, you're familiar. We've talked about them before. This is a great app for iPad and iPhone, creating widgets for HomeKit stuff. They released a big update, and it seems like you have been playing with this app a lot. So tell me, what have you been doing with Home Widget? Yeah, we teased this in an old episode that has been coming out with the release of 16.4. 16.4 is out. So um, the biggest thing here is that relocking function using mm -hmm. Widget from the lock screen. So there's this new like lock screen action in the shortcuts app. Uh, so they're able to use this. So you can tap on a widget. It'll like open, run the command, then relock your phone mm -hmm. afterward. Basically running everything from your lock screen without having to do anything. Um, nice. There's a new action type for rollers and shutter blinds, uh, more precise mm. control, opening position, stuff like that. Um, they've added a new run shortcut, allows to launch shortcuts Ooh. without returning the application or home screen. Um, nice. and improvements to the switch dimmer functions. Ah, so yeah, so it's a couple nice. of small things, but I think the big one is the, that the whole lock screen scenario. I think it's pretty sweet. That is pretty cool. All right. Very cool. Well, home widget link to that as well. You should try it out. Get some home widgets. All right. Let's thank our second and final friend before we get to some personal projects. And that is hello fresh. Hello fresh. It is America's number one meal kit delivering those meal kits right to your door. I have to tell you, I've tried HelloFresh several times. You've tried HelloFresh, right? You've done HelloFresh. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. I actually love getting these meals because my kids like to cook. And uh, yeah, I think, Andrew, one day you'll be able to experience this when your child grows up. You know, it's a nice family project uh, to do together, cook something. And HelloFresh makes it super easy because they give you all the ingredients you need. They give you the nice, these beautiful cards that show you the recipe and how to make it. And uh, my kids can follow it, and we can all do it together. And so it's kind of a fun family experience. But listen, HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering those pre-portioned ingredients, easy-to-prepare recipes, and they deliver it right to your door. So skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. Is it warm up there yet, Andrew, or is it still cold up there? I don't even know. Uh, it's Ohio. It's both. 
Okay. Okay. Very it's going to be 20 and frosty, and then it'll be 50 in the afternoon, and then it'll be 70, and then it'll snow. Okay, very good. Well, as the war, as the weather gets a little warmer up there, you can spend less time in the kitchen with quick and easy meals like HelloFresh Fast and Fresh Pineapple Chicken Tacos. I do love the tacos from HelloFresh. Or Falafel Power Bowls ready in 15 minutes or less. And HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal convenience items to choose from each week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. I don't know if taste buds have toes. Uh, that's I like the I like the analogy, but I, I just don't know. That's a little weird to think about. But anyway, um, I do want to say one of the meals I got recently, I just got a box yesterday, and there's a salad. Uh, one of the meals is a salad that is, like, not really any cooking involved. The chicken is, like, pre-cooked, and so if you just want to make the salad, has chicken, delicious, and it's super fast. You know, a lot of times I'm in the rush uh, around lunchtime, and so they have some of those quick and easy meals like they were just saying. So highly recommend. So here's what you do. Go to HelloFresh.com slash HomeKit50. Use the promo code HOMEKIT50, all one word for 50, that's 5-0% off, plus your first box ships for free. That's HelloFresh.com slash HOMEKIT50, and use the promo code HOMEKIT50 for 50% off. That link is in the show notes, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Our thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. Now you have some some personal projects, and you said you have you have a brief rant you would like to go on. So I'll, I'll let just I'll a let brief, you know. brief brief rant. <laughs> brief rant. Okay. Please. Yes, I'd love to hear. Go ahead. I love the TV app. Faith was even sitting in the living room the other day, and she's like, "I love the TV app. It's so Doesn't nice to be like able to rant. find all." The... It gets to the rant. <laughs> okay, okay. It okay. starts off good. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, you you got stuff in Peacock, Hulu. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bravo, Prime, USA, uh, HBO, TNT, Paramount, Disney, all Plus. of these different things. And yeah. these are ones we actually use. And sure. it's, of course, impossible to keep track of where everything is. So it's, it's really, really nice to have that all integrated into the TV app. Other Except for than Netflix. 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 Get out of here, Netflix. Netflix. I'm pretty sure they've wanted to sponsor every episode of this show, and we've told them no because they won't integrate That's with right. the TV app. That's exactly Not until how. you integrate. Watch them come out. We're going to get sure. an offer from Netflix for like $1 million. It's like, will you <laughs> compromise? Next week's episode, Netflix is great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. <laughs> this show brought to you by Netflix. Yeah. Will we sell out for a million dollars? Probably. But I love there's 8,000 dating shows. <laughs> Can I be honest, though? I know you're ranting, right? But I keep going into Netflix. There's been a couple good shows I enjoy, a couple good movies. Not as much content as you would think for twenty dollars a month if you want to watch in four K. You know what I mean? Like it's the most expensive streaming service, and I feel like, I mean, there's a lot of content. I just don't feel like there's a lot that I actually want to see. But anyway, there's not a good. ton. I am excited for the new yeah. Adam Sandler movie because I like Adam Sandler movies. I like Adam Sandler, um, like Murder yeah. Mystery too. But anyway, uh, getting back right. to this. Okay, go ahead. Rant. So go ahead, please. The problem, problem is, and Apple, yeah. you can fix this in TVOS seventeen. Give us a de facto choice on where to watch content. So we go to watch something. It's available in 15 apps. Let us set a priority of where to stream at. Because we'll go to yeah. watch something, uh, you know, pick a TV show. And my first choices are going to be things like the Paramount Plus or like Hulu. They're going to have some of the highest quality and like we already pay for them and stuff like that and it's like um yeah you wanted to watch this in spectrum and it's like five <laughs> yeah, minutes just... to boot up and I'm like no spectrum. stop going to spectrum and like i have to it. have it installed because i'll need it for like a random sports game yeah, because of exactly. like geo blocked you know streaming nonsense um, but it, it goes to that same thing is like, I'll go to watch like a Cleveland Indians game or a Cleveland guardians game and I'll go to watch it. And for everyone else in the, in the world, open up in, in, you know, Hulu and ESPN. I'm in Ohio, which means it has to go through the Fox sports go, which has now been rebranded Bally sports. Yeah. So yeah. I have to open specifically that game in Bally sports and like Bally integrates, I believe, I think with the TV app, but I, I it so. won't go there because it tries to open like an ESPN, and then it's ESPN's like, "Oh, you can't watch this." I'm like, <laughs> sounds just like that too. Yes. You so, like, the, your solution is for everything that you want to choose where you open, you have to hold on it, hit view details, 
and it'll bring you to yeah. the show page. And you have all the all the episodes. Then you got to hold again on the episode, yeah. a few details of the episode, and then it'll mm. pull up with the synopsis. And then below is your cards of where you can stream at, and then you choose the one. But I just want to be able to set the de facto options, my my preferred streaming apps, so that it doesn't try to kick you over to weird ones that suck that for some reason it decided that it wanted you to watch in that day. And I don't understand, because we never watch anything in Spectrum or in a couple of these others, and it always tries to kick us over there, and it makes no sense. And the watching experience in some of those apps is is awful. Yeah, I agree. I do like when I search for a movie, like you can swipe down and see like where that movie is available. But I wish Apple would just kind of integrate with like Just Watch or something, or give like the Just Watch app some more like I don't know abilities. Because if it's available on Netflix, you can't see it in the uh, Apple TV app. But anyway, okay, okay, good rant, good rant. I, I agree. It could it could be a little annoying sometimes. So now you also have a couple things here. A Robo Rock. Now wait a minute. I know you have the Ultra in hand. Is this about the Ultra, the new S8? This is. Ultra. So um, I was actually filming this earlier this morning, Stephen. Um, oh, oh. So the the review will be up. Um, we'll put it in show notes so you guys can watch and learn about the Robo Rock S8 Pro Ultra. Um, yes. One of the things that yes. I had learned that I did not really mention in the initial one, I brought I brought some um, some demonst- demonstrative items so we can show what I'm talking about here. So Did someone just this... hand that to you? Did someone hand no. you those things? No. Oh. <laughs> really Lovely like... assistant. No. <laughs> yeah. This is the water tank, one of the water tanks on the S7 Max V Ultra, right? Um, okay. For people who are watching, for everyone listening, I'll try to paint you a word picture. But basically, the lid goes over the entire top with a hinge all the way on the back, and the opening clasp is where the handle is. Okay? Steven, I'm, I'm okay. sure you're going to be able to understand what I'm going to talk about here. Um, so when you go to say, fill this up with water, you lift it up with the handle from your tank. It lifts up into the air. You go to like the sink and then you're, you can't open yeah. it cause your hand it's, is on the handle. It's so annoying. you have to close your handle, then open it up, then fill, yeah. which is a little, yeah. little annoying if you're filling with water yeah. and then you close it, reopen it again. But what happens Stephen, when you're going to empty your dirty water? So you lift it up. You take it to, like, the toilet or toilet or whatever and dump out your water. Sure. And, okay, so you're holding it above the toilet in the hand. I can't open it now because your hand is in the way. So when you try to open it, it straight up, it just runs into your hand. So you yeah, have yeah. to hold the bottom of the basin, close right. the handle, pop it open, lift yeah. it up. Now you're going to dump out the water. Like, so I'm, like, holding right. the lid on the... But now the handle will tilt the handle. forward uh, yes. and goes I'm... right where you're pouring all of the water. I'm very so you're going to pour your dirty, yes. gross foot water on the handle. So then you end up having to hold the handle, hold the thing, hold the lid while dumping yes. it out. And it's, it's, it's frankly dumb. And I don't know yes. how they didn't catch any of this when they were, like, designing it. So that's the, that's the S7 Max V Ultra version. Yeah. The S8 Pro yeah. Ultra, Steven. I mean, look at this. This is, is so much better. better. Oh. So much better. They fixed everything. So the oh. the top now only opens about halfway. So you can actually hold the handle while you open the top. Oh. And there's no yeah. blockages. You yes. could even hold the handle and hold yeah. the lid and at the same yes. time. Yes. Yes. You can tilt it and the handle oh, the handle closes goodness. the opposite direction if you ever needed to. So it does all yes. that. Um only I thing I would add, say is that right there, Stephen, is the the top doesn't quite stay up. It, the hinge sure. needs to go a half an inch back so that it can yeah. rest there. Because when I'm filling this up with water, I basically had to sit there, sit there because the <laughs> lid kept trying to fall closed. So like that, that is a minor annoyance, but it's honestly not. Uh, it's a huge improvement over the S7 Max V Ultra. Yes. So there's something using it and living with it. I, a guy wouldn't even notice that kind of in like the spec and releases and stuff like that. But once I've been kind of playing around and using it more. That was such a small but really welcomed change to the usability. Uh, I also think the look of the dock is significantly improved. It looks oh, like, yeah. it looks really pretty. It looks oh, like, yeah. so much better when they cover up the front. The last one looked not bad, but the fact that that's just all one piece now and you don't see all the bins, you do see them from the top, but it does look a lot nicer. Um, Cleaning-wise, yeah. the... 
the verdict is it does probably better. It does better with, with spills and little things that are on the ground, like dust or flour, like in the kitchen, because it has the dual rollers to help scrub that. But in terms of like general cleaning and like bunny hair and like the tumbleweeds that we have going down the hallways because of all the pets, there's not a huge difference because cleaning functionality wise is still the same. It still has the one little brush sure. on the side to get against the walls. Um, and it still mops. Um, similarly, though, there's a, there's like the cross scrubbing. So I, I, scrubbing is probably better, too. Um, I wish it was still yeah. winter because then we had a lot of we would track some snow and salt in and we mopped a lot more. And you could definitely right. tell that it didn't get all the salt off. So I think it would do better with that. It's definitely overall a, a better cleaning experience, but the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra already set the bar so high. Like when that's yes. like my comparison, it's like, oh, it's not that much better. But yeah, these are some of the highest end vacuum cleaners that are out there. So mm -hmm. they're just the top of the list. So check out the full video. You can kind of see it more in action, but uh, yeah, that review is up. I'm very envious. All those frustrations with the little like water things and the handle. I mean, I have the S7 Max V Ultra. I use it all the time and that is so annoying. So <laughs> Those I'm glad you experienced the same thing. So I don't sound like uh, I'm like, you no, know, no. you're making things up. Like it's kind of annoying. I mean, I've used it for almost a year and I still am not a hundred percent sure. Like how to do the handle when I'm emptying the dirty water. Like it's still, like, it's still not like a natural thing, but anyway, uh, we got to wrap this up pretty soon, but I know you had one more thing. Uh, Zen's. I don't even know what a Zen's is. Is that, is this a Dr. Yeah. Seuss thing? What is this? We're going to run through this really quick because, yeah, like we're, we're hitting our, our, our end here. But this is such a cool thing. This is, a, this is one of those mini reviews that we queried you guys on. You said you liked them. So let's, let's do another one real quick. This Query. is a four-in-one all-aluminum MagSafe charger, uh, and it's pretty sweet. Four-in-one. So check, watch out for the review, to, the full review to be coming up as well. So here we are. This is so precarious. <laughs> <laughs> so precarious as I'm like holding this up. So again, four in one, you have your iPad here on the back. You have your Apple watch here. It's got Apple watch charger sits on the lower right hand side. And your iPhone is perched right there on the right hand side. All uh, your phone being held up with MagSafe. So yeah, your MagSafe charger there Yeesh. slaps on. Even for the larger phones can more or less fit sideways depending on your iPad situation. Um, there's a little dock here in the front for your Apple or your Apple pencil to sit on oh. uh, USB-C for your iPad. So whatever iPad you have, as long as it's USB-C and not an older model, it can charge on here as well. And it'll do um, full 15 watt charging on your iPhone. Um, can't get this USB connected upside down while looking. Um, the Apple Watch though, the only thing is it's not a fast charging Apple Watch module. Mm, so okay. Zen's actually uses these removable modules. So this just picks up uh, and it's just USB-A, and huh. USB-A is never going to support fast charging. So even though they can update right. new modules and release them, it's still going to be USB-A, so it'll never be able to get the fast charging. And I know we've talked about how that's kind of like a must-have thing uh, for us. But otherwise, this is a really nice uh, desktop yeah. charger. Yeah, like it's anodized aluminum around the outside, so it's like that space screen. color, iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, Sheesh. AirPods, all on one little device. So this is pretty cool. This is my latest charger yeah. test now. We did that Tesla one uh, a week or so ago. So right. Newest one. What do you think, Steven? I love that thing. If it did Apple Watch fast charging, I might be about it. Because honestly, my iPad mini is the one device where I have, like, I keep it by my nightstand. And it's the one device where, like, I have to have a cable just hanging around to charge it. So I have the beautiful Belkin 3-in-1 tree, charges my AirPods, watch, and phone. But my iPad yep. just sitting there, like, hunky-dory and... You know, I would love a, a dock like that to do it all. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. I will look for that review. I might I might have to try it. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, depending yeah. on your situation, it still might not be bad because it would, if you're going to let your watch charge overnight, it may not matter. Um, for me, it I do just wear my watch over overnight, and I just really need that fast that's charger. True. And it kills yeah. me that there's not a fast charge puck on there, but... Yeah. You know, there's always going to be a downside uh, nice. to every product, I guess. But th that is cool. It is really cool looking. And I do love that iPad mini uh, type charger. Uh, iPad Air, I guess, could work for it too. Or Pro. I guess it just depends what size. Yeah. But I anyway. checked all the way up to the 12.9. They all fit. Um, the oh, back is okay. Enough. Yeah. The only thing I'd say with the larger iPads, you can't tilt your iPhone because the, char the chargers are side by side. If you have a 12.9 right. inch iPad Pro on there, you can't tilt your iPhone in landscape. Because sure, they would sure. overlap. They would overlap. 
Um, I think yeah. it would actually fit, but they would start to like overlap. Yeah, it'd be weird. That is a really cool thing, though. So watch for Andrew's review on that. Links to everything we talked about in the show notes. Big show today. Let us know what you thought. You can tweet at Andrew and myself. Let us know what HomeKit projects you got going on, how that HomeKit architecture upgrade went for you in 16.4. We'd love to hear about that. Of course, you can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. Don't forget to give us a five-star review in Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See you, everyone.